Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'la habita fillah The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said Min husna, min husnu islam amari Tarku ma la ya'ni The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said From the excellent of a person's islam is leaving those affairs that do not concern him. If we were to practice this prophetic advice in light of our usage of social media, for example, a lot of fitna would be deterred. And what I mean, Habitifillah, for example, there are many sisters, for example, they have WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups, and accounts, all these various groups where they have a global community. And they speak about their husbands, the affairs of the bedroom, the affairs that take place between their husbands. They advertise their impending divorce. They advertise the fact that they uh, that so and so is divorced, that so and so is getting divorced, that so and so is dissatisfied, that so and so is having problems in their marriage, that so and so is doing this and doing that and seeking advice from people who have no knowledge. So this is very important for the mu'min to be weary of these behaviors and be cautious of participating in groups like this in order to protect his or her honor and protect the honor of their Muslim brothers and Muslim sisters. And this is in accordance with the prophetic advice. Likewise, another fitna that we find is using the social media to belittle the du'at. That we find all the latest news about Sheikh so-and-so or du'at or da'i so-and-so. That they've done this, that they participated in this, they went to this place, that they are uh, a person of bid'ah, that they're this, they're that. We don't reject those kuwa'id of the shir and of the salaf al salih about refuting ahl bid'ah and warning the community of the mistakes of someone if this person is outward in their mistakes and if their mistakes can reach and harm the people. But what we're talking about is using social media for namima and ghibah, for backbiting and slander and for carrying tales around the community. Because we know in accordance with many prophetic hadith, but especially one in particular, that this is one of the reasons for the punishment of the grave, that people spread namima. So don't think that it's restricted to just speaking. But what about the one who is spreading it on social media and it's lasting on that social media and it's being carried tales around the world? People in China know the business and the, of this household. People in Uzbekistan know that uh, so-and-so uh, did such and such sin or allegedly did such and such sin. And likewise, these false tales or tales that are carried, whether they're true or whether they're false, are problematic and spread facade. And some of the people enjoy spreading the facade. They enjoy spreading the sinfulness around the world the sinfulness of Muslims. The Prophet والسلام, was walking by the graves and in some reports the graves of two Jews. And he said, Verily they're being punished and they're not being punished for something which the people think is great. As for one of them, he used to not protect himself from his urine when he was uh, using the restroom. And as for the second, that they used to carry the tails. And the ulama mentioned a namima is to spread uh, tails around the community with the, the intent of spreading wickedness. How many people believe that they are in the sight of their Salafi brothers and sisters, or the sight of their brothers and sisters in Islam, or whatever the case may be, being raised up in their sight, and perhaps they are because they have news about so-and-so. 
because they tested so-and-so and now they can spread it around the internet. How many people spread falsehood? So that means they have the intent to slander and attack the character of someone in order to raise their status. Do they not fit the bill? Do they not fit what the Prophet ﷺ said? فَكَانَ يَمْشِ بِالنَّمِيمَةِ And they used to spread wicked tales. Ahabatifillah, beware these wicked attributes that are not the attributes of the mu'mineen. Laysa min sifat mu'mineen. And that these are dangerous characteristics which can destroy marriages, destroy households, destroy Islamic unity, destroy Islamic brotherhood, and deter the people from benefiting from the people of knowledge and the people of benefit. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from being of those who spread evil and from witnessing evil and protecting and preserving evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of all our many sins and bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Some of the scholars, they differ with regards to other things. But the Prophet ﷺ said, فَعَلْ مَا شِئْتْ You know that with regards to uh, having relations, that if a woman is not in her menstruation, that it's permissible to do whatever as long as it uh, is not the anal sex. And as long as it uh, is not outside the bounds of the shara. And I'll just leave it at that, as there are different opinions regarding some of the things like oral sex and other things. And I'm just being uh, open because the Prophet ﷺ was asked the question, Ya Rasulullah, inna allaha la yastahi man al-haq fahal al-mar'a uh, fahal al-mar'a ghusl idahiyah talamat So the Prophet ﷺ was asked a very sensitive question. And said very, and, and, and the Sahabia, she mentioned, she said, oh, yeah, I think it was uh, Imra'at Abi Talha, the wife of Abi Talha. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, verily Allah is not shy from the truth. Does a woman make ghuzl if, if she has an orgasm, if she has a wet dream, if she has a wet dream? And then the Prophet said, Na'mi the Ra'at al Ma. Yes, if she sees. Uh, water, she sees basically uh, what is fe known as female ejaculation. So letting us know that we have to be frank when it comes to seeking knowledge of the deen, not brutal and not er uh, not uh, with bad language, but these are important questions. So this is why I, I'm just sharing that with regards to those issues I, I just mentioned. So it's important that the woman tries to fulfill the need of the husband. Something I would say for longevity that's very important is that the woman is always conscious of that, beautifying herself for her husband, taking care of herself. A lot of men, especially with the, the things that we see, the distractions, social media, the internet, and all these things, it's important for her to take care of her body, not let herself get overweight. Not let herself get out of shape. Not let herself be unhealthy. These are very important, especially to reverts. So I would say this is very important to everyone. But especially in as coming from being a revert myself, that it's very important for us because of our experiences prior to Islam. And this is very important. The visual is very important for men. Plain and simple. Likewise, for the man as he needs to hear this, that he should also strive to take care of himself to remain, uh, be handsome for his wife. He shouldn't come all tore up and stinky and this and that and the other from, the, from work and just want to be with his wife and just grab her. And he should also follow the Islamic adab of trying to send a messenger, as the Prophet ﷺ said, by softening her heart and basically foreplay, doing those things to try to please his wife. So it's very important in addition, within that marital bond to strive to do those things. Without getting into in-depth detail, another thing that's very important 
is to, as the, the Sheikh mentioned in his beautiful advice, is that Islam is not just a series of rights and responsibilities. That you're always demanding your rights. Oh, you didn't buy me the ice cream I wanted. You didn't do this. You fell short in spending this month. Or the opposite. She didn't uh, come to bed that one time. Uh, she was angry with me. She didn't come to bed. I want a divorce. No. Islam is not encouraging us to be quick to have divorce. So I advise, my advice is to share this with the brother because it's very important to know that yes, there's those rights and responsibilities, but Islam, as well as any marriage, those people who have longevity, who have 50 years, they will tell you they weren't always la di da in love, but it was they were compromised. They compromised and strengthened one another. That's what you want to do. So it's important to have marital goals, to have things you want to achieve. Don't go into the marriage with the intent that if she messes up, I'm divorcing her. He messes up, I want a khula. I'll immediately no. It's right, it's it is those rights and responsibilities, but it's compromise. It's compromising and helping one another. Not compromising uh, Allah's right, Tawheed and Shirk and Bid'ah, La. But it's that you should have mercy for one another. You should have love and, and, and strive to help and assist one another. And what I will say, especially to being a revert and having that experience, because I know what we go through is that be serious about marriage and know and, and make it for longevity do everything you can that hey you're gonna be with this woman and if you have problem seek wise counseling be willing to sit and humble yourself in front of her parents as arbitrators be with be humble and sit with the uh, the Others that you trust in the community or the imam or the student of knowledge or something that's trustworthy, not someone who's going to be and pray upon your marriage and, and, and spread wickedness about your marriage and spread your business, but those who you trust, who you can uh, trust to want good for you and good for keeping your marriage together. Those are some of the main things that I can think right off my the top of my head as far as advice for a relationship such as this and making a marriage happy. Be willing to compromise and help and assist one another. Do not go in the marriage as a man thinking that she's just a piece of property and if she doesn't do this, she's out and I'm out. Or the opposite, that he's not up to standards, I'm leaving or he makes a mistake, it's finished. But rather, again, it's willing to cover one another's mistakes and striving to work things out and build and strengthen one another. Very important, I would say, to want to have a goal and comp complement one another. If it's to finish your education, you're both into education, complement one another. If one person's into education, the other one's not, at least empathize, at least try to strive to help the other reach those goals. But don't tear apart, destroy that. And very important, lastly, is to strive to have Islamic knowledge in your life. Meaning, that not that you're both going to try to get into Jamaa Islamia or, you know, some Islamic university or even though this is the one of the great things that you could do, but rather that you're always reading and trying to keep the deen in your life. And if one becomes weak in Iman, the other one is striving with wisdom and gentleness to bring the other one back to be upon his or her deen. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said wasn't correct was from myself and the Shaitan.